so if it if it mid mid interview you want to just like I might, one I grand might, I might one take grand it off. emotion just like take it off. But wait until you have like a really good answer for something and be like, I need <laughs> hey, this. <yeah>. Right. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> See, I'm laughing again. Hello there, and welcome to Taiwan Plus ICRT. It's an interview series brought to you by Taiwan's only all English video stream platform and all English radio station. I'm today's host, Trevor Tortomasi, and we're joined in the studio today by Emily Wu, co founder of Ghost Island Media, a podcasting platform here in Taiwan. Emily, what's up? Hey, thank you so much for having me. Great hey. to be here. Emily, let's let's start off easy. What's a podcast? <laughs> okay, wait, wait. We can start with what is Ghost Island Media? <laughs> no, no, no. No, what is podcast is fine. So Ghost Island Media, as you said, it's a podcast network. We started mm -hmm. in Taiwan at the end of 2018. Mm -hmm. So at the time, I just got back to Taiwan a second time around. I'm from Taiwan. I grew up here, went to school here, went to school in the States. Um, since I was in middle school, bounced around. After college, I came back and worked at TV stations. All I did was video for, for uh, 10 years. And at some point, I started listening to podcasts, and I love the medium. I love that you have access to just crazy parts of the world. And so I thought I wanted to come back to Taiwan and make podcasts. But the problem was at the time, in 2018, there was so few podcasts in Taiwan. There was 30 I think we counted like we, 30. We crawled through Apple Podcasts and just typed in like Zhongwen or Taiwan. Yeah. And just made a list of everything that was there. So end of 2018, um, I was coming back to Taiwan and looking for projects to do. Somebody said, oh, I know somebody. He's looking for a producer. Um, it turned out to be this guy, Nate, uh, an American in Taiwan. He's a researcher for sustainability. And so we met up and hit it off and just started recording and writing and recording. Eventually, we would we found people in Taipei who had podcasting experiences and uh, start building it up. And eventually, co-founders joined and volunteers joined. And now, two and a half years, three years later, uh, we are about six people, six full time staff and um, 10 shows. Yeah into the network. It seems like a big reason for the boom in podcasts in like North America, for example, is because people are driving all the time. Those long commutes and everything uh, give the perfect space for people to sit down and just listen to something on audio. When we're in Taiwan, maybe commutes are a little shorter. People aren't driving as much. But what has been the biggest challenge and, and how did you change your approach with Ghost Island Media? Yeah, so it took a bit of experimentation to understand what would be acceptable in Taiwan. Um, a lot of people listen while commuting still for our in Taiwan. People are walking, people are biking, people are on the MRT um, or if they're traveling between like Xinzhu and Taipei, right? That's still a long commute. But a lot of the other times um, they're listening while they're doing dishes, when they're working out. And we put out a survey at some point for our audiences and some actually say they don't do anything while listening to the show. They actually take notes. <laughs> That's actually really cool. Uh, I love that. Now, eventually, as we launched our second and third, fifth, tenth shows, what is compelling about the shows, they change. So we started yeah. experimenting with format. So this year in May, we did a audio documentary. Um, in the Gaobai. Right? In the Gaobai, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a story of a mother and daughter. Um, the story was that the mother was diagnosed with cancer, terminal cancer, and was told she had one year to live when you're only, and so the daughter said, you know, let's let's chat. Mm -hmm. Let's take the next year and just talk. So we recorded their journey of um, reconciliation, of conversation, of love, and, and, and being closer than ever. Mm -hmm. And that became the first audio documentary podcast for Taiwan. Now, that genre is not new in the English sphere. Um, we also want to play a part in nurturing like the new generation of creators. And that's yeah. college students from interns to high schools. Um, we, I, we work with some high schools and to kids. Um, so we really want to play up the format. And so at every point, like what we are trying to do is always different. And eventually, I want to do um, scripted. Eventually, we mm -hmm. want to do musicals. We want to do interactives, maybe. So obviously, Ghost Island Media has a lot of shows in Chinese, which is great here in Taiwan. Um, but you also have some shows in English. Um, how has it been and how do you feel kind of about the inevitable plateau of like how many English listeners you have when it's a Taiwan specific show? Yeah, so our English shows, even our Mandarin shows, they're never meant to be for Taiwan audience only. Mm -hmm. um, they're all our audience, our target audience was always the world. So that exercise for us is how do we capture all of the listeners in Taiwan? as the first stop mm -hmm. and then go beyond it. Audience doesn't have to just be in Taiwan. Correct. Right, correct, yeah. Correct, correct. So even for Mandarin content, uh, I mean, Mandarin is spoken 
in so many, so places. many places of yeah. the world. I mean, you have so many places to go with all of these. So Yeah, yeah. So the past couple of years, uh, kind of weird. How has that affected the growth of podcasts, do you feel like, in Taiwan or in the world? Obviously, people are spending a lot more time in yeah. their in their thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I think all over the world, um, when the pandemic first happened, everybody saw a dip. Mm. Because it was a disruption in our, in our routines, right? And, right. And eventually, that dip came back up. At first, in the States, for example, people were listening to a lot less news for some reason. <laughs> for some reason. But I think it... I think I know the reason. No, I think also <laughs> because maybe that's what people listen to during commute. We saw very similar things in Taiwan as well. At first, like uh, earlier this year in May, during the semi-lockdown here, storytelling shows became really popular. Mm. There was a big shift in the rankings in Taiwan. All the news and, and kind of factual programming kind of took a dip and uh, storytelling ones came up. Family storytelling, especially for kids. But then we saw, I think, very similar things as the States. It, it reshuffled itself again. For us, it meant that sponsorship money slowed down because people were really scared. But then later on, you see that like once things stabilize in its new ways of life, I guess, there's still tons more money being poured in and podcast tech and um, a lot more shows. And so it's all good news. It's very good news. Um, thankfully, podcasting is the kind of thing that we could do remotely. Okay, so uh, you were already producing shows before, or was this your? This was not your first foray into the the media creation scene. Um, so when I first came back to Taiwan, I was with public television. Um, I was at the what they call it at the time was the international department. Um, we made international co-productions of like TV one hour length documentaries. After public television, um, I went to another media company called uh, Next Media Animation. Mm -hmm. um, I think some folks, if the audiences have been in Taiwan for a little bit, or if you've liked news, if you're a news junkie in around 2010 to 2013, um, yeah. these were these uh, animated news recreations of just funny news events. And so, Some of them went pretty viral. I remember the one yes. about Steve Jobs was like worldwide famous for a, for a bit. Yes. Yeah. yes, 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 yes. And the formula at the time was, um, it was, the, at the time was we'll take news that have long legs so things that people are really talking about hmm. we would make a satire out of it like a like a like a cartoon mm -hmm. kind of if you imagine what a um, newspaper cartoon is but turn it into animation mm -hmm. it was tech it was steve jobs it was politics sarah palin was it we <laughs> animated her a lot um some fun things a sarah palin <laughs> template yeah we did we did um so we had like footprint everywhere and that was really fun because when i was at Public television, the exercise was how do you tell a Taiwan story to a global audience? Mm -hmm. And um, at Next Media, it was just how, like, what is the global conversation? Mm -hmm. And what do we have in Taiwan that can contribute, that can add to this global conversation? Um, and you, you were doing it every day. So there was a lot of exercises of like, is this, will this story stick? Yes, is this good? Okay, let's write it, research or write it, make it really quickly. And then let's get it out. Um, so that was really, really fun. So that was fun day. So I really missed that. I really missed um, just being viral. And we eventually, we, we picked up, we, we won a couple of Webbies at the time. Mm. We were on Jon Stewart, like, Really and it's getting awesome. Taiwan out there too a little bit, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, having had that experience, and then now with Ghost Island Media, seeing that there was a particular medium that was really accepted in the world. So, like, what could we do with that again? Mm -hmm. And because right. it's so easy to start a podcast and stuff like that, not necessarily to make it succeed, but just to collaborate with someone is the simplest thing to get rolling. And then once you collaborate with someone, then more ideas come out and more ideas form, and then you have other projects that might work better. Um, during COVID, another thing that we we benefited from is that there were a lot of amazing talent in Taiwan. Um, amazing talents who ended up interning with us. Everything we you see on this table, everything that we have here, it just like it's because somebody at some point and came came and said, hey, let's do something together. Mm -hmm. And so it just that collaboration. So like earlier I said we we're six people. No, it's really it's this has been a work of like 40 or 50 people, I'd say. And like that is what I'm incredibly proud of and like really happy with. Um. It's a difficult question to ask, but because uh, I, I, I worry about it a lot, making a podcast of my own, but what do you see for the future of podcasts in Taiwan? So for Taiwan, uh, they call 2020 like the first year, the birth year of podcasting for Taiwan, mm -hmm. which meant that was the year where there was a lot of creators. Um, a couple of platforms came about and it enabled creators to uh, easily upload and, and kind of distribute the shows without knowing English, because at the time, 
because mm. before that it had to be on English platforms. Right, right. Yeah. We have creators, we have listeners. Um, the advertising side is now being built out in Taiwan, so that's something to get excited for. Mm. Um, what's kind of called the dynamic ad insertion, like when you're watching YouTube and you get an ad. It kind of like that, except you can pick the points. Mm -hmm. They're never really randomized, right? There, you can tell, you can dictate. Okay, this is where I have a break in my show, so this is where I want to insert an ad. Mm -hmm. um, so you should, if you're listening to the to our shows in France, for example, you should be getting a French ad. And yeah, then you'll get yeah. more people supported and more people making stuff. Yeah, yeah. But what we're really excited for is eventually um, for a platform to really build out subtitling capabilities mm. for. For podcasts, I think several platforms are working on that, but they start with transcription. So you always see that, and a lot of them are testing it. So like KKBox in Taiwan's testing it. I think Spotify is working on it, but as far as I know, they're not working across languages yet. It's just transcribing right. for now. But also uh, having this goal of of having everyone learn more English, it's it's an ambitious goal. But I mean, like the more kind of media we can get where it's available in an easy to listen way, but also there's like resources for helping you understand something i think it's awesome that makes that means there's more room for some english shows um and more room for chinese shows maybe other places in the world too so it takes time uh it takes a lot of people um it takes tech as well and mm -hmm. so i think this is a really good time to be doing media because there's so many people working on tech mm -hmm. and you know the more tech that's being worked on like the more it benefits us so absolutely yeah. what needs to happen before people realize how easy it is to listen to a podcast. Yeah, so that goes back to the tech side. I think it, the more that tech companies are investing into audio tech, mm -hmm. the easier it will be for everybody. The challenge at the very beginning was even just to explain what a podcast was. Yeah. But at the time, like actually a lot of people were already on Spotify. So when Spotify added podcasts in spring of 2019, it mm -hmm. really changed everything. All of a sudden, we, we didn't have to explain it anymore. By the mid of 2019, you just have you just say podcast. They go, oh, is it on Spotify? Yeah, oh, yeah it is. Okay. And for all others, having a website that people can listen to the audio files directly is really important because mm -hmm. a lot of people are here just to sample. Right. Right. And even for me too, like if I'm, you know, you tell me about a new show, I don't necessarily want to fish it out and subscribe and find it. Mm -hmm. You send me a URL, I can sample it and go, oh, I loved it. Oh, I like this. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I want more of this. And then, and then do you have easy links for them to yeah, subscribe to? Mm -hmm. Where can people find Ghost Island Media and what you guys are making? So the easiest place mm -hmm. to start is our website, which is ghostisland.media. Um, on that, you'll have links to all of our shows. Uh, you can sample the, the episodes on the websites, and then there'll be links to platforms hopefully you have in your phone or you can download. I'm sorry, I'm not being helpful. But yeah, no, okay. this is great. You should see 10. Mm -hmm. um, right now, of these 10... Seven in Chinese? Yes, seven in Chinese, three in English. We're, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, just under Ghost Island Media or Ghost Island Me. And um, we have new shows coming up this spring that I'm really excited about. The one in French, um, the one, um, the environment one for students. Um, they're all working with really amazing collaborators. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like super excited about this and working with like tiny kids. So. Nice. Yeah, social media and uh, yeah, social media. Okay. Yeah. Well, everyone, thank you, Emily Wu, for coming in today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And everyone, you've been listening to Taiwan Plus on ICRT. Thank you for joining us today.